In the vast tapestry of history, among emperors and warriors, a singular figure dances forth, Kublai Khan. Born in the whirlwind of Mongol conquests, this enigmatic leader wasn't merely content with inheriting an empire. He dreamt of weaving one. Come, let's embark on a journey where ambition meets destiny in the footsteps of this legendary Khan. Chapter 1. The Dawn of a Leader In the heart of the Mongolian steppes, where the wind whispers ancient tales, young Kublai was taking his first steps, unaware that destiny had grand plans for him. Picture this. Vast plains stretched out like an artist's canvas. And there, a young prince playing, his eyes as fiery as the stories of his grandfather, the legendary Genghis Khan. Born amid nomadic tents and the galloping hooves of horses, Kublai's crib tales weren't the usual lullabies. Instead, they were sagas of conquests, bravery, and empire dreams. As the young prince grew, so did his appetite for knowledge. From gripping the bow and arrow to understanding the nuances of leadership, his tutors were astounded by his flair. It wasn't just about the art of war for Kublai. He also had a curious heart. Under the vast Mongolian skies, he'd often wonder about distant lands, rich cultures, and the tapestry of governance that held an empire. Little did the world know, the stage was being set for a leader unlike any other. Chapter 2. Rise to Power Amidst the sprawling tents of the Mongolian steppes, a young prince stood on the brink of destiny, squinting into the horizon, dreaming of an empire even grander than his grandfather's. Kublai, with ambition sparkling in his eyes, wasn't just another princeling in the Mongol lineage. He was a storm waiting to unfold. But dreams don't simply materialize, they demand grit. From orchestrating elaborate hunting parties to charming local chieftains over fermented mare's milk, Kublai learned the ropes of leadership. His charm, as stories tell, was as potent as the Mongolian archer's precision. The high point? The inception of the Yuan dynasty. A non-Chinese ruler over the Middle Kingdom? Quite the plot twist. Kublai's Kanbalik, modern-day Beijing, wasn't just a capital. It was a testament to Mongol audacity. Streets bustling with traders, diplomats, and even spies whispered tales of the meteoric rise of this prince-turned-emperor. As they say in the annals of the steppes, not all storms are destructive. Some, like Kublai, are meant to create dynasties. Chapter 3. A Flourishing Empire In the heart of Kublai's sprawling empire, a delightful game of culture and commerce was afoot. Picture the bustling bazaars, with traders from distant lands chattering like exotic birds, their stalls laden with silks, spices, and stories. The Silk Road wasn't just a trade route, it was the world's grandest theater, and Kublai was its master director. Enter Marco Polo, the Venetian wanderer with a knack for storytelling. He wasn't just another face in the crowd, he was the Khan's personal guest. Kublai, always the curious cat, relished Polo's tales, offering glimpses of faraway places with enchanting sunsets and spirited souks. The empire wasn't just about power, it was a canvas painted with the vibrant hues of diplomacy and exchange. From Chinese scholars studying Mongolian epics to Persian artisans adding their flair to UN artistry, the empire was a potpourri of traditions, simmering under Kublai's watchful gaze. It was a time of magic, mayhem, and a melange of marvels. Chapter 4. The Audacious Ambitions and Windy Woes In the realm of Kublai Khan, dreams knew no boundaries, and neither did ambitions. Ever the conqueror, Kublai set his sights on a tantalizing prize, the island of Japan. But you see, Japan wasn't a piece of cake, nor a plum ripe for picking. Twice, Kublai's mighty fleets, laden with warriors, sailed the treacherous waters, only to meet an unseen, unexpected foe, the Kamikaze, or what we cheekily call the Divine Wind. Mother Nature, it seemed, had picked her favorite. The first time the wind blew and the Mongol fleet was well, fleetingly defeated. But Kublai, ever the stubborn strategist, thought, maybe, just maybe, the wind was a one-time prankster. So he tried again. And, you guessed it, the wind, in a sassy encore, roared back, leaving Kublai's naval aspirations soaking wet and windswept. While other conquests painted his legacy, Japan remained the elusive butterfly, flitting just out of Kublai's grasp, teasing his expansive dreams with gusts of wind. Chapter 5. Legacy and Influence. A Dance of Cultures. Once upon a time in the realm of the Yuan Dynasty, 
There was a vibrant cocktail of cultures so intoxicating, you'd think the empire had thrown the grandest party in history. Imagine the Mongolian yurt meets the ornate Chinese pagoda. That's right. Kublai Khan, the master of ceremonies, had stirred the vast Mongol ruggedness with the delicate elegance of China. Silk swayed with leather as the Silk Road buzzed louder than ever. Imagine traders in their flamboyant robes swapping tales from Arabia alongside Mongolian horsemen sharing campfire stories. The Khan, with a vision broader than the steppes, rolled out a red carpet made of roads, canals, and bridges. These weren't just infrastructural marvels, they were the Empire's lifelines. And as the Yuan Dynasty's influence bloomed, so did its cultural concoction. The arts flourished with a pinch of Mongol zest and a splash of Chinese sophistication. Kublai's governance wasn't just ruling, it was a sophisticated dance that invited everyone to the floor. Cheers to the Maestro Khan. Chapter 6. The Twilight Years A Khan's Kaleidoscope of Quandaries In the grand tapestry of Kublai Khan's life, the threads of his twilight years shimmered with a mix of gold and gray. Here was the great Khan, still majestic as ever, but with a beard that whispered stories of countless seasons gone by. Yet beneath the silvered strands and a crown that sat slightly askew, there was a twinkle in his eye that refused to dim. The empire, vast and vibrant, started to show small cracks, like an old porcelain vase. Internal strife simmered, sometimes boiling over, as distant regions sought to rewrite their destinies. Economically, the once overflowing coffers of the Yuan dynasty began to feel the weight of prolonged festivities and extravagant whims. Oh, how the merchants whispered about the dwindling Silk Road treasures, even as they exchanged knowing glances. But it wasn't just empire-sized headaches. Kublai, our seasoned protagonist, began battling personal demons. Gout played tag in his joints, and insomnia played hide-and-seek at night. Yet amid these challenges, there remained the indomitable spirit of a ruler who had seen and conquered much. The sun was setting on the horizon, but Kublai Khan? He wasn't ready to ride off into the night just yet. Chapter 7. The Echoes of Kublai In the bustling streets of modern-day Beijing, if you listen closely, you might just hear the distant whispers of hooves. Could it be Kublai's cavalry on another enigmatic mission? Amidst the towering skyscrapers and neon-lit avenues, traces of Kublai's grandeur dance like playful shadows. Visit the heart of the city, and there, standing majestically, is the Forbidden City. Although built after Kublai's time, its essence is bathed in the traditions and influences of the Yuan Dynasty. Ah, and did you feel that breeze? Perhaps it's the same wind that once fluttered the silk robes of the Great Khan as he plotted his next move on the Imperial chessboard. Take a detour to a bustling market, and between the wafting aromas of dumplings, you'll find trinkets, paintings, and curios that harken back to the Silk Road's golden age. Each one seems to whisper tales of adventure, diplomacy, and intrigue. And as the evening sun casts golden hues over Beijing, one can almost envision Kublai, with a mischievous twinkle in his eye, saying, Ah, you've found my echo. Now what tales shall we weave together today? In every corner, every stone, and every gust of wind, the playful spirit of Kublai Khan lives on, forever etched into the tapestry of time. In the tapestry of time, Kublai Khan's tale is but a vibrant thread, woven with ambition and audacity. Yet, as we pull back the curtain of history, the Khan's legacy dances cheekily before us, daring us to dive deeper, to explore further. So, dear history enthusiasts, until our next playful jaunt through the annals of the past, remember, Legends never truly fade, they just await rediscovery.